So hello everyone, my name is Harold Olery. You can call me Sami. I'm from the beautiful country of Belize. So today for my topic of discussion for this TEDx talk, I'll be talking about the betel nut, the king of the Asian fruits. And for my presentation, I want you to keep this quote in mind. Think about it before you chew it. So what is the betel nut? Well, the betel nut, also known as the areca nut, is a nut or seed harvested from the areca palm. In the olden days, people would utilize the betel nut for its pharmacological properties, to treat colds, fevers, even dysentery. But nowadays, it is more used recreationally. How so? As the betel quid. It is a betel nut wrapped with sodium hydrate lime salt in leaves and chewed. It would normally be enjoyed by, you know, your friends and your colleagues, your guys and your gals. Now, I say it is a king. Why is it a king? Well, I will look at its economic significance as well as its toxicity. In Taiwan, the betel nut industry provides well over one million jobs to Taiwanese men and women alike. And the business is so lucrative that it is the second highest agricultural grossing product in Taiwan, just behind rice. It even makes more money than the eggs and mango industry combined. And it has been that way since the 1990s. The business has been managed to make over 100 billion national Taiwan dollars annually. However, I think the most scintillating thing about its economic significance is its ease of cultivation. Taiwan provides the ultimate climate, this subtropical climate, for planting the areca palm. And it is said that one person can rear two to three acres of areca palm by themselves. This is especially important for the Taiwanese people. Why? Because slowly the society is aging. It is turning into an older society like Japan. A lot of the younger people are moving out of the rural areas, going into the urban areas or outside the country, for that matter. And a lot of these young people, well, they're not having enough babies. So the society is getting older. And because of the ease of cultivation now, the older folks that want to work, that have to work, they can do so. Providing money for their families, and in turn, providing money for the economy of Taiwan. Now let's look at the toxicity. Let's look at some factors as to, make, as to why the beetle nut is so detrimental. Dependency. The first time you would chew the beetle nut, you will get a sense of euphoria sense of alertness. Now imagine if you're chewing this nut now 10 to 15 years down the road. You wouldn't want that feeling to go away. You develop a dependency on the drug. In no sense or fashion is good to develop a dependency on anything. It degrades you in terms of your social aspects, your mental aspects, and of course your health aspects. And then now we look at the community aesthetic. I love Taiwan. And the first time I came to Taiwan, I'm not going to lie, I was quite flabbergasted to see these little red blotches all over the place. I wondered what was that. I asked my Taiwanese friend, is that blood? Is that, what is that? Is that paint? And he was like, no, 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 no. It's actually the thing they spit out from chewing the betel nut. I'm like, huh? It's something someone spit out? He was like, yeah. I find it quite disgusting, to be frank with you. It's not pleasant to look at. It's not pleasant to look at in front of the schools, in front of hospitals, when you're driving on the road, even when I'm playing basketball with my friends, I will see it around the courts. And leading on to the environment, or, yeah, the environment itself, we have degradation there as well. The areca palm is not really much of a strong plant, I would say. The roots are very shallow. It does not uphold the integrity of the soil. Taiwan's topography is a mostly hilly type of topography. It is susceptible to landslides, which we see a lot in the news. 
and the areca palm the tree itself, it actually adds insult to injury or fuel to the fire due to the massive amounts of erosion it causes. Now we look at another toxic culture as a result of the beetle nuts. Here we have in Taiwan, dotted across the highways, about 50,000 stalls of selling beetle nuts. And in 50,000 stalls, we have 50,000 women dressed in outfits that leave little to the imagination. Now, it is no, it is no um, mystery that women and children are the most vulnerable people on earth. And sometimes men take advantage of these women. They molest them, they harass them, and in some cases hurt them. No human being, no woman should be treated this way. And now we get into one of perhaps the most awful effects of the bees not chewing, oropharyngeal cancer. Let's look at the pathophysiology. What happens in your mouth? So basically, the beetle nut, it contains a number of cancer-causing chemicals called alkaloids. And one of the most prominent alkaloids within the beetle nut is the aricoline. The aricoline combines with the fibroblasts in your mouth. And in, in turn, it synthesizes collagen. Collagen is necessary for the growth of cancer cells. So the more you're chewing the beetle nut, the more collagen is being formed the more cancer cells are growing. And in return, those cancer cells, they promote the growth of more um, collagen as well. So what I just said is that you're chewing the beetle nut and little sores are forming in your mouth. Those little sores are the precursors of the oral, of the oral cancer you can catch. We refer to those sores or the precursors as oral leukoplakia or oral submucosal fibrosis. Treatment. Thanks to science and modern technology now, we offer a wide array of treatment for any cancers, inclusive of oral cancer. We have immunotherapy, target therapy, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and perhaps the gold standard, surgery. Look at this patient. He has received treatment post-oral post cancer from chewing betel nut. He has lost his entire bottom jaw. Yeah, he's treated. But one might think, what have been the reasons why he's in this position? Let's look at the risk factors. For the most part, majority of the beetle nut chewers, they fall in a low socioeconomic bracket. Number two, a lot of the beetle nut chewers are of the Aboriginal or Indigenous people of Taiwan. These people utilize the nuts and have been utilizing it for well over a thousand years now in cultural and religious practices. For one example, the men would provide a good amount of betel nut to their bride-to-be as a dowry, as a sign of respect and as a sign of wealth for the families. Peer pressure. Having a sense of belongingness is quite important, I think, for anyone across the world. And in a, in a society where beetle nut is chewed, you don't want to be the odd one out. Think about it as like, example, you're in school. Everyone has a nice, fresh Jordans on. I really have a little old Adidas. You can buy that Jordans, but probably a week later you'll be hungry. Same thing thinking about the chewing of the beetle nut and being peer pressured into it. You know for a fact the negative implications behind it but you don't want to be ostracized, so you chew. And then leading on to the other risk factor, coping with energy demanding jobs. These falls in line with people that are in a low socioeconomic bracket. These are the people that would have the long jobs, the truck drivers, the custodians, the contractors, the, 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 the construction workers, sorry, that have to cope with the hours. And again, these people fall within a low socioeconomic bracket. Now, let's look at some statistics that I think you should know as we speak of the gravity of the beetle nuts in Taiwan. More than 2 million people in Taiwan chew beetle nuts. 
And it is said that people that chew and smoke, two beetle nuts and smoke cigarette, have a 6.5 times chance higher of catching oral cancer. Every year we have about 8,000 people catching oral cancer and 3,000 deaths. And 70% of these people that catch it oral cancer, about, yeah, they chew beetle nuts. And on a special note again, majority of the chewers are Aboriginal people of Taiwan or the indigenous people. Now, government spending. It is said as it relates to the treatment of oral cancers, or cancers in Taiwan, oral cancer ranks the f as, as fifth. And it is said that more than 53,000 people seek treatment each year. Almost 40,000 is spent on drugs. And in total, for an entire, the entirety of their hospital stay, it's, they spend about $185,000 for treatment alone. These monies can go into other places, education, infrastructure, tourism, helping out the migrant workers that come to Taiwan who seek a better life. Now, fighting the effects of oral cancer. What should we look at? Here is another patient that has been treated for oral cancer because of beetle nut chewing. He has been chewing for over 25 years, lost half of his jaw. So he turned to a foundation, the Sunshine Foundation of Taiwan. It's like a rehab center that helps out people post-surgery or post-treatment from oral cancer. So we will look at their roadmap to recovery. What they do to help you? Number one, supporting physical recovery. Here, they offer physical therapy for you to gain back the ability to chew your food, drink water. They offer techniques for oral hygiene. They offer techniques for wound cleaning or wound dressing. Number two, eliminating barriers to recovery. This is mostly the financial aspects of things. For the most part, majority of the persons that acquire the surgery for oral cancer, they're men. And a lot of the times, these men are the breadwinners of the home. Now, because of this now new form of disability, they cannot work. Money is gone. And sometimes, physical therapy does not help out these people. They need to switch to another form of dieting, liquid supplements, which is very expensive. But no need to worry. The Sunshine Foundation actually offers help to these people in forms of subsidies or grants to pay for their miscellaneous, their travel, their bills, to help them get by in life. And thirdly, helping to adjust to life after treatment or after cancer. Here is more, more of the psychological aspects of things. It is difficult for anyone to wake up one day, look in the mirror, and see a different face. That once handsome face that you had, that one be once beautiful safe face that you had, gone. What can I do now? You end into a cycle of depression, moodiness, anxiety. Not to worry, the foundation offers help, psychiatric help, for you to de deal with and cope with your situation. But help is not only limited to the patient. Help is also offered to the family members of these patients or their caregivers. Most of the times, these people would have to seek new jobs as well to help keep the family afloat. And on top of that, have to take care of the family members or the persons that have been affected by the beetle not showing. So help is offered to them as well. Now, I've reached at the plight of my presentation, the end of it. And we we'll go back to my quote. Think about it before you chew it. I have presented here in this presentation a pro, but more cons. One might say that, hmm, he's somewhat biased. But as in the medical field, I'm all for health. And based on what I've seen, what I've researched, and what I've presented with you, to you today, I would say the implications of chewing beetle nut, the detriments outweigh the benefits. Yeah, it makes a good amount of money for the government, and the, the economy of Taiwan. But slowly, the government is replacing this issue. 
they are finding alternatives that can help this. We just have to adapt to that change. I believe that Taiwan is a very progressive society. You guys have done many things more over that the other parts of the world have not done as yet. But I believe this progressiveness is getting into an age of being regressive due to the utilization of these beetle nuts. I want you to take this information with you today. Take it to your communities, take it at home, take it to your families, your friends. Especially, take it to the beetle nut chores. I want you to stand in front of them. I give you this information for you to utilize. Now please, think about it before you use it. Everyone, my name is Harold Woolery. Thank you for your time.